This is the United States, and this is Canada, and this is the world. As a matter of fact, it's a map of the world. Maps tell us a whole bunch of stuff. And today, we're going to look at a bunch of different maps from all around the world. We'll check out a map about population growth via counties in the United States, a topographical map, a climate map, an historical Russian map of California, and so much more. Local maps, regional maps, international maps, nonsensical maps. You're tuned in to Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and these are the maps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. For our very first map, I figured we'd do a rather simplistic map, but at the same time, an extremely valuable map. The lightest green on here is sea level, and the darker green it gets, the higher the elevation. Until you get to the yellows, the browns, the reds, the white, those are the highest elevations on the map. So clearly there's a lot more higher elevation in the western half of the United States compared to the eastern half. But you can see little pockets, especially along the Appalachian Mountains, up into the Adirondacks and other parts of New England. There are various mountain ranges through there, the greens, the whites. Midwest, there really is not much of anything uh, mountain-wise. There are a few higher elevated places, such as the Black Hills or the Laramies. You know, they're dotted around. We can really see the rivers and their tributaries really well in this part of the country on this map. The Gulf Coast is pretty much all sea level. And then we start hitting west. Let's look here at Colorado. We can see the Rockies. They're very steep. Uh, everything is pretty steep through here. Taking our gaze to the southwest, we can see the Sonoran Desert, Death Valley. The Sierra Nevadas are this steep range along here. As you can see, the entire state of Nevada is all mountain ranges. So on the western side of the Sierra Nevadas, we see the large inland empire of California. Going up the coast, we follow the Cascade Range. Uh, the mountain range that you can see there on the Oregon coast is the Coast Range. And then on the peninsula there of Washington, those are the Olympics. And this map tells so much without really having to do a whole lot. It's a very impressive map. This tells you at a quick glance the elevation throughout the United States. It's just a really well done map. Here's a pretty straightforward map of Canada. I wish it was a little bit better quality, but it is what it is. This tells us the perimeters of forest fires from 1980 to 2022. It truly is amazing how many boreal forests are up there. I don't think people even realize that wildfires happen up here. They just see it happening in California or something like that. So this is a pretty interesting map. Not much to say here. This is a map of the Korean Peninsula. And of course, the top there, uh, the dark area, is North Korea. There is one blotch of light where Pyongyang is located. Uh, southern part, if, where all the lights are, is South Korea. You don't think about the unemployment rates much in Italy, but here we go. People always say there's a southern and northern divide in Italy, and it seems pretty obvious that that is the case. Look at the unemployment rates down in the southern regions of Italy compared to the north. Yikes. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a date, so I'm not sure what time period this is for. This map shows us Africa, as well as all the different countries that once held territory in Africa. Notice that Ethiopia was never colonized by anyone. I notice the map is also incorrect with South Africa, because that should probably be Britain, not labeled as South Africa. Ooh, it's gonna get nerdy. This map shows us the population growth by county in the United States. The areas with the most growth are the Pacific Northwest, some key cities in Texas, Florida, and roughly much of the West. I can see Salt Lake City, Metro in there, as well as Western North Dakota. And that is due to the energy sector. You can also see the counties around Atlanta and Nashville growing, Charlotte, North Carolina. Now for the places that are shrinking, out west there isn't a whole lot, but there are a few. New Mexico as a whole, almost every single county appears to be losing, except for places like Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Las Cruces. The Midwest, the Rust Belt, those all seem to be losing. The Northeast as a whole, Appalachia, and some pretty thick areas of blue in the south. 
It looks like Washington state might be the only state that is fully growing. Oh no, Hawaii. Hawaii is growing fully too. So this map's fascinating because it's mostly all rural areas that are shrinking and the big cities that are growing, for the most part. This is a map of the world showing only the places that have a life expectancy above 80, as well as those right on the cusp. So we can see most of Asia is not on the map. Africa doesn't exist. Most of South America doesn't exist. You can see a little bit of Chile, parts of Argentina. The Northern Territory of Australia is missing. A large swath of the United States is missing. All of Russia is missing, as well as parts of Europe. Interesting map to see the world in this way. Certainly a cool way to visualize this and only a way a map can do. So this is showing us the travel routes of all commodities and goods in the United States as well as parts of Canada and Mexico. And this is from way back in 2010. I right away noticed two major hubs. You see Chicago as well as Kansas City. Kansas City seems to be a split off point as does Chicago. I am surprised to not see thicker lines going from north to south on both coasts, but I guess that's what it is. This shows us the purchasing power of people throughout Europe, split into different regions. Eastern Europe has less purchasing power than much of the West. Spain has a fairly low purchasing power, as well as Southern Italy, which also ties into that earlier map about unemployment in Italy. Interesting. Remember the hit NBC TV show, The Office? Well, here's all the countries that were mentioned in The Office. How could they not mention Tuvalu? Here's an interesting map of how to say the word yes in every European country. Ya, si, ui, ja, da, a. This interesting map shows us the flow of water through different rivers across the United States. The biggest, obviously, is the Mississippi River, followed by what might be the Columbia River, then maybe the Missouri. That Ohio River is looking pretty thick, though, too. This map shows us the available annual household income of families in Germany. And this really still shows the historical lines of World War II between Eastern and Western Germany. The income disparity between the two regions is still fairly obvious. And the wealthiest area is down south, it looks like in Munich. This is just a fun map of Canada. It shows us some wildlife and different types of trees, as well as some recreational activities. Nothing really to point out, but just something interesting to look at. It makes me think of a map that would be in a classroom, and it's just something nice to appreciate. This shows us major cities in the United States that are over 250,000 people, where the majority of the population is white and non-Hispanic. So as you can see, a lot of cities on the East Coast and the South are completely off the list, such as New York, Atlanta, Philadelphia. All the cities in Texas have disappeared except for Plano, and California is non-existent on this map. Here is an 1840s map of California made by Russian explorers. A lot of people don't realize that outside of Alaska, Russians had gone as far south as Northern California, and explorers had gone even further south but they didn't make any settlements. This map isn't very accurate, but it does at least get the coastline eh, somewhat correct. This map shows us the wettest seasons of the year based on averages between 1981 and 2010. Surprisingly, it looks like for the majority of the country, the wettest time of the year is summer. New England has a lot of their wettest part of the season in fall, as well as the Great Lakes region. And the Pacific Coast is all winter, except for a few tiny dots of fall. Spring accumulations seem to gather around the mountain west region, as well as along the upper south. This next map's pretty cool. Using data between 1981 and 2010, it shows us when the coldest day of the year is most likely to happen. For the most part, everything west of the Rockies, and a little bit over that, seem to have their coldest part of the year in December, while the other parts of the country seem to have it after December. The biggest flaw with this map is it doesn't tell us what year these totals are from, but what it is showing us is how many KFC chicken fast food restaurants are located in each state. The state with the most KFCs appears to be California with 440, while the state with the least, it's a tie, it looks like Alaska and Wyoming, each with six. 
Now, per capita, which this map doesn't show, is a different story. Mississippi and Kentucky are the top two with the most KFCs per capita. Third is West Virginia and then Arkansas. All of those states have over two KFCs per 100,000 people. This is showing us every lake in the country of Finland. That's a lot of lakes. This is the poverty percentage by state in Mexico. The South struggles with much more poverty than the North, but don't let the colors fool you because even the orange here is 60 to 70 percent living in poverty. And these happy shades of green up here range from 20 to 40 percent poverty rate. That's very high. And that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for watching Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and those were the maps. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We also have a Patreon which you can support. In the future, when we get Patreon supporters, they will be shown here. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Ya, si, ui, ja, da, ah.